It's our final part of lesson 4.2 and designing experiments well. And the question today is, does the type of SAT prep that we're going to do matter? So MCHS has decided to offer an SAT prep class again this year. It can be online or classroom teacher. And counselors wanna know which teaching method will yield higher SAT scores and they have allowed us to set up an experiment. So for the 50 students who have signed up, we are going to outline a completely randomized design to compare the two treatments. So go ahead and pause the video Video and do that completely randomized design like we worked on yesterday. So again, this is a completely randomized design this time. We're going to take our 50 student volunteers and randomly assign them to one or two, one of two groups. Group one will have 25 students and group two will have 25 students. Treatment one I decided would be the online prep course, treatment two is the classroom prep course, and then of course at the end we will compare their SAT scores and how they did. So, counselors at MCHS hypothesize that the online versus classroom results could be greatly affected by grade level of students. So because some students were juniors and some students were seniors, Typically, the counselors know that seniors will score better on the SAT than juniors because they've had more experience taking the SAT, they've had a little more curriculum under their belt, and they've typically done something to try harder to do better on the SAT if they need a higher score for scholarships or for the school they want to apply to. So how could we adjust our experiment to ensure that there's an even split of seniors and juniors in each class? We wanna draw and outline this experiment with some modifications from our previous design. So in this one, we're gonna take our 50 students and we're gonna start by breaking them up into juniors and seniors. So 20 seniors, and 30 juniors are taking the SAT prep course, okay? So now I do my random assignment, which again has to be included, random assignment. Because I'm going to be assignment, come on, this is like, uh, we are going to be looking at, okay, so I will have group one A, which will be 10 seniors, and then I will have group two A, which will be 10 seniors, okay? And the reason I'm going to call it one A and two A is because I'm going to call down here the first group, 1B, which is going to have 15 juniors. And then group 1, sorry, 2B will have 15 juniors. Knew I was going to run out of room here. I should have given myself a little more room. Okay, so now here's what we got to do. We have treatment 1, still online. Treatment two, which is the classroom. So half of my seniors will get each treatment, okay? And then treatment one will go to the 15 juniors in the online format. And treatment two will go to the other 15 juniors in the classroom environment. Okay, so now what this allows me to do is I can compare seniors to seniors and I can compare juniors to juniors and then I can compare all together their SAT scores. So maybe I see that seniors happen to do better in the online format and juniors also did better in the online format. Well, now I can really think like this was because of the online format, not because I had more seniors or more juniors in a particular grouping. All right, next, the counselors, um, oh, and I'm sorry, I should call this something because this is important too, right? So we call this 
when we broke them into groups before doing the random assignment, we call this a randomized block design. And the idea of a randomized block designed experiment is that I broke them into blocks first to ensure that there was an equal number of juniors and seniors getting both of these treatments because I think that that can influence the outcome. So number three, counselors are worried that GPA could also affect SAT score. So let's only look at juniors. We wanna be sure that different GPAs are distributed evenly into the two treatment groups. How could we be sure that GPAs are evenly distributed? So one way to do this would be to order GPAs from least to greatest. and take the two students, take the two students with the highest GPA and pair them flip a coin to assign one to the online group and the other to the classroom. Repeat this process with the remaining juniors. until all have been assigned. So what this does is it tries to make GPA less of a factor in how it's going to influence how students do on the SAT. We call this type of a design matched pairs design because we attempted to match the pairs that were similar and put them evenly into the two treatment groups. This should allow us to hopefully limit the impact of GPA on our SAT scores, our response variable. All right, so let's look at some vocab, big ideas. So we have the randomized block design. We have types of experiments over here on the left. A block experiment is the group of experimental units that are known to be similar. So we're not just gonna you know, pick blocks for no reason. We're picking blocks because we know that these are similar and can affect the outcome of our experiment here. So a randomized block design will separate subjects to blocks and then randomly assign the treatments into the blocks. Okay? Now match pairs are, that would be an experiment that's used to compare two treatments with the same group of experimental units or two very similar experimental units. And again, we want to randomly assign the order of the treatment still. So even though you're going to block them or pair them in some way, you still want there to be randomization. In our previous example with GPAs, we flipped a coin to decide who went into which group. All right, let's head on to the check your understanding. So the situation here is that researchers want to design an experiment to compare the effectiveness of three different advertisements for a new television series featuring the work of Jane Austen. There are 300 volunteers that are available for this particular experiment. So in number one, I want you to describe a completely randomized design to compare effectiveness of the three advertisements. And then in number two, so that's completely randomized. In number two, I want you to do a randomized block design for this experiment. And I want you to pick what the blocks might be and why you would pick them. 
then why might a randomized block design be preferable in this context will be your question for number three. So go ahead and pause the video, come back when you're ready to go through it. So we'll start with that completely randomized design here. We'll take those 300 volunteers and randomly assign them into three groups. There were three advertisements that they were looking to test. So group one will have 100, group two will have 100, and group three will have 100 people in it to receive each of the three different treatments. So they may get add one or add two or add three, depending on what group they fell into. Then we have at the end, compare the effectiveness of those advertisements. Now, when I think about a randomized block design, I wanna to try to think about a block that might affect how someone views these different advertisements. And one thing that I thought of was whether or not someone's even familiar with Jane Austen. So I said, let's break the 300 volunteers up into familiar with Jane Austen and not familiar with Jane Austen's works. So now from there, we need to randomly assign into three treatment groups for each of the blocks. So group one will get a third of the people, group two and three will get a third of the people for each of the blocks. We don't know exactly how many volunteers are gonna fall into each of those, so I was only able to put one third. So then they will get add one, two, or three based on which group they fall into as their treatment. And then I will compare within each block, and then I will compare the two blocks to each other to compare the effectiveness of those advertisements. All right, so again, the random assignment is important, assigning to the groups, which then assigns them to a treatment. So now we want to talk about why the randomized block design is better in this case, and it's because it reduces variability that can be caused by those who are or are not familiar with Jane Austen. The ads may have different effects and effectiveness based on that particular characteristic. So, that is it for this particular lesson. Again, the vocab and, and what you really need to know is what's the difference between the completely randomized and the block randomized design, and then be able to identify if there is a matched pairs design as well. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.